Good evening. Blaze Blitzer with a special report. We're going live to the alleys behind the Kremlin where the last McDonald's is closing their doors. Tonight, the devastating story. McDonald's no longer serving its mouth-watering french fries in Moscow. For this report, we go directly to our counterpart, Igor Sputnik. Yes, good evening, Blaze Blitzer. This is Igor Sputnik. Uh, Tonight we are talking to Ronald McDonald because, uh, frankly, last McDonald's serving. We're no longer getting mouth-watering the best fries in the world. Mr. Ronald McDonald, come close to this uh, microphone. Tell us, why are you leaving? Igor, Igor, we gore. You know, I've been here uh, many, 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 many uh, years. You know, I came uh, I'm from the east side, you know, uh, back in the States. And it's a very sad day that, you know, I got to pack up my bags and my shoes and um, my outfits that I've been wearing for years. And... Where are we going to get our delicious burger? What are we stuck with? We don't even have a Whopper here, okay? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, uh, maybe if I leave Grimace, uh, maybe I could leave the Hamburglar. The early bird, I'll throw her in. Maybe maybe you could talk business with them, but I got to bail. I got to split. It's a very sad day that boys and girls and, and folks like you are not going to wake up tomorrow and, and enjoy a delicious heat lamp uh, artificial flavored uh, breakfast that everybody loves because uh, uh, we put magic uh, pixie dust in our food to uh, overwhelm your taste buds and, and uh, give you delusional thoughts. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I thought I was describing some of our nutrients. No, I'm just, I was describing your government. People on the street, they love you. Don't go. Hey, don't forget about the French fries. Don't forget about those cheap twofer deals and the McChickens and the McNuggets. And don't forget about the McRib. I love, I'm going to miss everybody over here. You know, uh, every now and then I've got those cute hats. And who, who, which one of you out there made me the hat that matches my suit that I got made in China? <laughs> it's just me being a clown. I'm a freaking clown. Look at me. Mr. McDonald, we make deal for you, okay? I will personally find Mr. Peter and take care of him for you. And for the entire world, as long as we keep delicious Big Mac Quarter Pounder, McChickens, and the rest of the fabulous menu of delicious McDonald's. Now, back to you, Blitz Blitzer. Hey, French fries for all of you. I love you. I'm going to miss you all. Thank you, Igor. Let's hope now that Ronald McDonald is coming back to the States, he brings restaurants back to how they looked like in the 80s, filled with things for kids and not boring, re-urbanized development from the mega corporation that it is today. Let's just hope Ronald McDonald himself sees a glimmer of hope for all of us who love the Quarter Pounder. Now, back to your regular scheduled programming of Back to the 80s Radio. La 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 la, la 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 la, back to the 80s. <laughs> It's me! Let's go on a trip! Back to the 80s! Ha <laughs> ha! Take me back to This is Back to the 80s Radio. I'm Toscano from Toscano and Chang, and this is the show where we talk about the memories that made that decade so awesome. Together, we're introducing the 80s to a whole new generation. We have an awesome show for you today because we have an icon of the radio broadcasting industry with us. So stick around if you want to find out who it is. But first, of course, we can't do the show alone. We can't do the show without the one who has been referred to as the ninth wonder of the Sunset Strip. He's been searching to secure a meeting with Axl Rose, only so he can return the favor, throw his old Chuck Taylors at Axl Rose. Here at Back to the 80s, he is known as the Chang. Ah, yes. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, here at Back to the 80s, uh, yes, we have an extraordinary extravaganza, the individual. Tonight is none other than one of the legendary, greatest rock and roll FM terrestrial style Los Angeles radio jocks in the business. If you want to know who it is, you got to stick around. Today, I want to give some special shout outs, especially to those who are fighting for a free Ukraine. God be with you all. I want to give a special shout out to anybody out there in the armed services and your loved ones back here at home. A special back to the 80s shout out to Ika Guzman from Chula Vista, California, who has now become a 
patron of our show. We truly, truly appreciate it more than you can imagine. And thanks, Ika, for sharing the 80s with a whole new generation. Ah,、uh, Ika, when I am cruising through to get here where I reside in Central California, maybe I will look you up in Chula Vista. Chula, Chula Vista.、Don't、All right, more、idea. 80s talk coming up and a special <laughs> visit from one of the most recognized voices in the world. So don't go anywhere. This is the one、yes. and only Back to the 80s radio. <laughs> Hey, this is Laurie Miller from the first and original Expose, and you're listening to Back to the 80s Radio with Tosca 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 and Jay. Jay. If you can't wear a spandex jumpsuit, what can you do? This is Back, back to the 80s. Welcome back to Back to the 80s. You are sitting in with Toscano and Chang, and tonight we are revisiting what do the 1980s mean to you topic. Troy Cordova says the movies were just great and terrific television. I agree. Now I know one television show was better back in the 80s, and that was.、Uh, oh, don't、Saturday、say it.、Night、don't、Live. say it. Oh, okay. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say MASH, and I was going to just go to a break real quick because. Stop I, being a hater. To me, MASH is the equivalent of Rush in music. Okay, now、oh, you get you the see, idea. You, you have something against the SH. <laughs> I didn't even、Shh. think about that. What was your favorite program on TV? Cheers, Cheers. Okay, all right, that's passable. Cheers. I,、uh, uh, you know,、uh, I love <laughs> knowing that you can go to a bar, be an alcoholic, and everybody doesn't care because of your friends, and everyone knows your name. I recall bar. I grew up in a bar like that really quick, and that was called the Prime Cut on Beverly Boulevard in Monteveo. That was kind of like our own Cheers. Everybody did know your name, you know. Even the cops knew who you were. So,、uh, you know, nine times out of ten, you're not going to go to jail, but you're going to give them your keys and pick it up the next day. That's it. I gotta say, my favorite TV program,、um, Cheers, Three Three's Company. Stop. <laughs> Is that because you were a dirty little boy, or that's exactly why? Because I I couldn't、oh, get enough、okay. of watching. Obviously, Ooh, Janet and Cindy and Terry. After that, and she was a little. I, I didn't care for the character. A good-looking woman, but I didn't care for the character. Yeah, yeah. and to、oh, me,、well. Jack Ritter. Jack Ritter was a character that brought. You mean back John Ritter? His,、uh, John Ritter. Jack Ritter. <laughs> Jack, Jack Tripper. Jack was Tripper. the character. The character was very reminiscent of visiting Dick Van Dyke. Back in the、uh, Dick Van Dyke show days, I believe that's the fifties. If you, I don't know if you remember such a show like that. Well, no,、Mary、I wasn't. Tyler Moore got in the fifties. No, I wasn't. I wasn't around. But but no, you I, you were I, in your early twenties in the fifties, right? Oh wow, wow, <laughs> wow! You <laughs> had a poster, life size. No, poster I did not. Of of John and Ponch. No, I did、bit. not. You, and you cut out John's face. No. And you would look in the mirror <laughs> with your face where John was, and you were writing your Poncherello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Philip Sandoval said that he loved '80s cars. You know what's interesting about the '80s is that as nice as you had cars. There was also the complete opposite. You had the crappiest cars that have ever come out. I think in the history、oh. of vehicles, and the number、yes. one car that comes into my mind. Well, there's three cars that come to my mind. All right, the yes, crappiest cars and the ugliest. Here we go. Starting、okay. with the Yugo with a sticker price brand new. That's you know four thousand bucks for a brand new five dollars. The Yugo is in third place. Number two,、mm -hmm. the AMC. Pacer,、that、remember the pacer? Too also, yeah, Dis that's、mm -hmm. disgusting. And in number one place of the ugliest car for me, which by the way, if you ever drove a stick shift, it only had three speeds, and that is also an AMC car, I believe, and it was the famous Gremlin.、Uh, the funny thing is, like, you could hide your hideousness with big hair. But you couldn't hide a hideous car nowhere.、Bro. Oh no! And one thing that I always tell my kids about the '80s compared to today, for example, let me let me let me give you a little backstory on this. I was dropping my kids off at Fountain Valley High School, and、right. as I'm dropping them off, I noticed that the kids there, a lot of them, were coming to school, either mismatched, wearing their PJs, the you know the pajama pants to school. Wearing sandals and socks, and I told my kids, "All right, 
you see this picture here, the guy wearing the PJs with, with his sandals and socks? It would have never happened in the 80s. A big thing that the 80s had was materialism. Every kid in school cared how they looked. And right, if they brother. weren't wearing to what they thought or what they liked, if they weren't wearing brand, brand name clothes for whatever their style was, they wouldn't be caught dead wearing PJs to school. Never. Oh, man. Especially in, in high school, bro. If I would have been in, uh, in high school and some cat would have rolled in with their jammies and their Jesus uh, sandals, man, I would have I would have had probably 10,000 jokes ready to go. Right. You, you know what I mean? Whoa, you just rolled out of bed. Wow. Exactly. You dressed to impress. I guess you're already dressed. For a prison suit. <laughs> yeah, and and apparently today, apparently today. Sorry, your mom couldn't do your laundry. Exactly. She's still at my house. Exactly. And I told my kids, <laughs> I go, you right? know, as a matter of fact, when we drive up to school, do you know how many times I tell them jokes about people? And I just can't help myself. I got to yeah. do it. And oh, then yeah. I'll see somebody and I'll go, hey, hey, check this out. <laughs> And I'll give, you know, tell them a joke about somebody and, I, and I'll tell them that would have never happened when I was a kid because yeah. we were so overly conscious and the kids would make fun of you if you weren't wearing name brand clothes. Yeah. I remember kids wearing Zodi's Wranglers. Remember Wranglers? Mm -hmm. They would wear yeah. them to school. They'd be made fun of. And unless you yeah. were wearing guest jeans or Levi's or, or Levi's, they'd make fun of you. Now, if you wore Jordash or Sergio Valente, you were even up the the higher scale. Well, you were you were rocking, brother. You, right, you were, come, you were ready for the club. Exactly. Uh, how about Dittos? Yeah. That's an, uh, another great thing that I miss about the '80s, bro, was the fashion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who who could or would ever forget the fashion of Dittos and what they did to the backside of any girl that wore them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could be a dude, maybe a gymnast, and put a pair of dittos on. Man, you're going to have some people with them, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is the one and only Back to the 80s radio show. Stay tuned, because on the way back, I promise you, you're not going to regret it. One of the greatest FM rock and roll jocks in terrestrial radio in Los Angeles, California, as a young boy and teenager, I idolized him. So did Toscano. Ladies and gentlemen, you will have to put your hands together for Mr. Shadow Stevens right here at Back to the 80s. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Like a creature of the night. Back to the 80s. Remember when we thought the, the, the 80s, 80s, 80s were lame? That's because we hadn't lived through this decade yet. You're listening to Back to the 80s. You are listening to Back to the 80s Radio. We are back, and as promised, of course, with us today is one of the most recognized voices in the entire planet. He's been an award-winning worldwide personality, an innovator for radio, television, film, new media, and visual art. You may have known him from American Top 40, which aired in 110 countries, heard by more than 1 billion people a week. He's been on The Late Show with Craig Ferguson, the voice of Antenna TV Network, and today he's going to be talking to us about his current project, which is incredibly awesome. So stick around. He is a man, a myth, and a legend, Shadow Stevens. Shadow, thank you for coming on Back to the 80s Radio with us. Uh, and never before in history has so much meant so little to so many. <laughs> <laughs> before we get started, I wanted to pay uh, my deepest respect to you, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. It is you and other jocks such as uh, the real Don Steele, Jim Ladd, uh, everybody from KMET, where you were once the voice of a generation, they were still doing uh, uh, rock and roll. They were not doing the alternative thing yet, correct? I was hired from KRLA because I did so well at KRLA. There were such big ratings, and we put yes. album rock on AM, and it was really unheard of at the time. Then I was offered to go to K Rock because they were going to come, they were going to have an FM station. And he said, well, I want you to do something as creative as you did at KRLA. And, uh, and then he offered me a Porsche. And I went, what could I do? Of course. I, I, you I went take over, it. But I went over and they were still like a top 40 station on AM. Mm -hmm. And then there was a whole, there's a whole, it's like, it's really complicated and long and very dramatic. But there was a hostile overthrow of the company. And then they 
fired everybody that was in the hostile overthrow. And the guy who started it took over again. And he said, okay, you're it. Make it work. And a short time later, they got the FM signal. And I not only designed the format and the promos and the marketing and the studio and the log and everything, but signed it on. And that is on my website, actually, the actual sign on of K Rock. It's on shadow.com and uh, a bunch of other the things that we did at that time with the Flo and Eddie show, you know, Mark Bowman and Howard Kim, yeah. who had everybody. I mean, Keith Moon and Ringo and, and the who's who of entertainment were on that show. It was incredibly exciting. And it signed on in late 73. And then we went and it was almost a direct, it went from zero ratings to one of the top stations in town in uh, like four months. And everybody in town was listening. And within six months, we weren't being paid and people were suffering and, and going bankrupt. And they were all staying there because we had created such an exciting, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge station. And it was, it broke all the rules. When we signed it on, it was all up, all rock, all the time. 24-hour party, we'll be playing hard rock in the morning, in the midday, in the middle of the night. And uh, come along because this is a, a non-stop party. And that's what happened. It, every, everywhere you went all over town, people were listening to K-Rock. And we had Flo and Eddie on, and that was, was like just super exciting. When everybody wasn't being paid, I finally couldn't take it anymore, and I quit. And the day I quit, the whole staff quit. And we did a, a go, and we were just talking about this this week because I found the, the uh, tape of that last show, and, and it was my go-away party, and Flo and Eddie were there, and the room was packed with people. And it was all intensely up music. And we were just going, this is it. We're saying goodbye. We want to say goodbye in the biggest, most exciting way. They turned the transmitter off. Mm -hmm. And we were left sitting there like, what? Wow. And then a guy who was hired, a a new manager showed up at the door and he said, I want you off the premises immediately. Mm -hmm. And I got up and I walked over to him and I looked down at him and I said, you need to turn around and leave right now or something ugly is going to happen. And he kind of trembled a bit and turned and left. And I packed up my stuff and went up to my office and cried. It was devastating. Sure. And I vowed never to be in radio again. You also created that energy with KMET, right? That yeah, and that's what happened. I started my production company, which would later produce Federated and all, and all these different advertising campaigns like the Blues Brothers movie and 48 Hours and Fast Times original. Yes, I, yes. All this stuff. We did all of that. At the time, it was just starting and I was really struggling. And the uh, manager of KMET came to me and made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So mm. there I did it again. And in six months, it was the number one station in town. I still have the ratings. It was unheard of how big that station was. Uh, and- you guys uh, painted the forefront to me, the, the blueprint of rock and roll radio in Los Angeles, rock and roll radio in Los Angeles. I think you guys were the forefathers, the pioneers of ass kicking uh, FM rock and roll radio. And I believe that uh, that was uh, a creation with the Donahue's also, correct? No, Donahue had a whole different thing going and he was very revolutionary at the time. And his was free form radio and free form radio was you go in and the personality would play whatever they want. The problem with that is that people get self-indulgent and they go, yes. well, I'm just going to play blues today, or I'm just going to play country today. Or I'm, and the audience you know, at the time, it was high quality. So they kind of went along with it and they went, oh, this is real anti top 40 radio, but it never got any ratings. It never got a, a mass audience. So when I came in, I, I streamlined it and made it like our whole job was to find new music. And we would all agree upon all of this amazing amount of music and put it in a kind of rotation that allowed for, you know, really obscure things, really brand new things, album cuts, but all of it fit the format and everybody would go along with it. And then we would always keep up to date week by week and then gave it theater, theater of the mind melody with funny contests and and real personalities, B. Mitchell Reed and Jimmy Rabbit and Stephen Clean. These guys were really amazing people. One of the things that, that both Chang and I have talked many times on different shows is the on-air personality back then. And if I can take you 
into the like 1980, starting from 1980 on, the radio personality became a, a staple in so many homes. You did yes. also the top 40, correct? And it was a nationally syndicated show as well. It, well, what happened was I stayed at KMET one year and they the manager got real. Um, he, he took he took credit for all of the things I'd done, ordered me to fire three people, two of whom I really loved. And they were brilliant, like Brother John. My, my Brother John was excellent. One of the great personalities of all time and also the voice of God. I told him I wouldn't do it. I said, you're not going to make me into you. He said, uh, you're going to have to get somebody else because I'm not doing that. And I, and I quit and uh, walked out, packed up the office, moved over to my studio and went, I'm done with radio forever. Wow. No, a year and a half goes by and K-Rock, which had been off the air since I signed, you know, the station was turned off. They come back to me and they say, we want you to come back. And I went, you're never going to pay me. I'm just it's like, well, I mean, why would I do that? Sure. But by this time, I had a, a, a thriving uh, production company. I said, I'll tell you what, I will consult and I'll do my best to give it some structure and make it something and give it some personality. But people aren't going to listen to me because they're not being paid. They're going to do what they want to do. And I won't be able to control that. I'll tell you what I do, will do. I will go and do two weekend shows myself and I'll sell all the advertising. And I'll keep all the money. And he said, fine. So I did that. And I did that <laughs> through the 70s and made a lot of money. And until I couldn't take it anymore, because it's the worst studio in the history of radio. It was, as we're turning into the 80s, I quit. And Rick Carroll called me. And he said, um, look, uh, these guys have been talking to me about coming in and programming K-Rock. What am I up, in, you know, what am I up against? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well... Yeah. Rick, here's what. It's a great opportunity for you to make a statement and do something really terrific. Chances are you won't get paid and it'll be really difficult. But if you just focus on the music and if you can get some order to the music and make it hot and new and call it something really catchy, uh, rock of the 80s or something, and you know, you, you can really do something uh, exciting and people will hear it. And hopefully you'll end up getting paid in the end. And he goes, okay. And he did. And he did a great job. Yeah, I listened all the time. All those guys. I know all those guys. Jed the Fish and all, all the guys, including Kevin and Bean, who came thereafter. And, mm -hmm. and it, it became iconic. I was a fan in the 80s. And then that was after Federated, after the television campaigns and the radio campaigns that I did out of the company. You also did acting also, though, Shadow. Well, that, oh, yeah. the acting came as a result of Federated because mm -hmm. I did 1,100 commercials. <laughs> and no commercial wow. ever ran longer than 10 days. And my little team was like a Monty Python group. Produced, wrote, produced, edited, created, uploaded, and did it again week after week for years. And um, so I did all these different characters. And on the, on the heat of that, because it was so huge, they went from um, 14 local stores in Southern California to 78 superstores, like Best Buy type stores. Right, I remember that. In four years. So we were opening in Texas and Oklahoma and Arizona, New Mexico and California and doing whole campaigns. And it was remarkable. And on the heat of that came an offer to do a movie, which was Tracks. And it was Dino De Laurentiis. And I thought, I'm going to have a chance to act. I mean, hell yes, I'll take this chance. So I had hell this yeah. three picture deal and they had, and this movie was so, the, the script was so insane. I went, well, this kind of fits me. So, so I go off to do tracks, quit federated because that's a whole other story. Uh, you know how that fell apart. Just before I went to shoot tracks, a guy came to me and um, a guy, the first guy to ever put me on television, Rick Rosner. And he did it when I was in Boston. And I did a uh, show in Boston called Gazebo, and I was the youth correspondent for Dave Garraway's Tempo Boston. And so when I came to L.A., Rick also was the one to put me on as Steve Allen's sidekick. So I'm on the, on the Steve Allen show nationwide. And then Rick and I hardly saw each other. But in the mid 80s, he came to me and said, we're going to bring back Hollywood Squares. Would you help us do the, uh, yes. the demo? 
So I did the voice of the demo and, you know, and it was the biggest hit of the year. He comes to me and he said, we want you to be a part of the show. And I went, no, I don't want to just be an announcer. I have a shot at, at acting and I'm going off to do this film. And, and then he came back to me again. And the third time he came back, he said, I'll tell you what, we'll put you in a square. And you do the announcing from the square and you can also be a personality in the square and you can be funny and you can talk about the things you've got going on. Talk about this movie that's coming out. I went, okay, that's a great idea. Now you got, yes. now you got camera time. Yeah. And it was in this little funky studio over at channel five. And, um, we had no idea how huge it was going to be. And pretty soon we're selling out radio city music hall. It was astonishing. So now uh, at this time, now I'm the kind of the Ryan Seacrest of the moment. Sure. All over the country, I've, you know, I've got this name value. So American Top 40, Casey Kasem didn't like the way they were treating him after he sold the, the business to them. And he had an opportunity to go create a new show for more money. And he took it. So they're scrambling. They're freaking out because it's the biggest show, radio show in the world. And they auditioned 1,100 people. Some of them were movie stars, television stars, and me from television, from Hollywood Squares and my background in radio. And I auditioned four or five times and they gave it to me. So that's how Holly, you know, American Top 40 came. And I was, you know, you guys know everything I've done in my whole life has all been parody, humor, tongue in cheek, funny. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yes. Now I'm going to sit in and become the host of a radio show known for the world's most sincere man. Right, right. And I can't do that. The first show took 18 hours to record because every line had to be restructured for my, for my mouth and give right. it a little humor or a little tongue-in-cheek or a little wit or a little something, or I sounded reedy and... Terrible. And, and his whole thing, he's just the most earnest man who ever lived. And, yeah. and yes. a really, really nice man. I, he, he was a friend of mine and uh, not a good friend at the time. Later, he became one. Back when my, my children were growing up, um, his daughter Liberty used to uh, come to our parties and, and we'd go to their parties and so on. But, but Casey is a genuinely good guy, but he's earnest. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Let's take a little break. When we come back, we've got more with Shadow Stevens and some surprises. You're listening to Back to the 80s. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Hello, music fans. Gordon Lightfoot is one of the greatest folk rock artists of all time, and now there's a podcast celebrating and discussing his work song by song. It's called Carefree Highway Revisited, and every episode, your host, that's me, Mike Messner, will examine one of Gordon's songs with the help of a special guest. So, if that's your cup of tea, give us a listen and give us a follow wherever you get your listening matter. That's Carefree Highway Revisited, a proud member of the That's Not Canon podcast network if they were a laxative they'd be so powerful you could stand on your head and shit on the ceiling that position would not only be unavailing but also undignified and now back to the 80s with toscano and chang ladies and gentlemen welcome back to back to the 80s with the legendary the iconic voice of the past one of the individuals that created terrestrial radio to be what it is the legendary mr shadow stevens Give them a round of applause boys and girls <laughs> thank you very much thank you thank you please sit down along with the tongue with you uh, how are you guys doing <laughs> we're doing great we're back and if you just joined us here we're of course talking with shadow stevens talk to us a little bit about radio in the 80s and what that meant to Look, you. you know i personally like the 80s myself and and i worked in the 70s and i worked in the 80s and but i was doing radio that wasn't really like what i liked i liked doing it it was a great honor but it wasn't radio it wasn't theater of the mind it wasn't what radio had become and the greatest me i, I like the 80s music so much in the in that era so much that i wrote a screenplay ab about it which was kind of a uh 
a cross between K Rock and KMET and different people, mm. real people that I knew. But it was full of this. It's full of this great Tears for Fears and Van Halen and Bronski Beat and nice. The Cure and Depeche Mode and Oingo Boingo and Talking Heads. I mean, the greatest oh, album yes. ever. And I hadn't ever been able to get it off the ground, but my passion for it is that. And and the truth of it is that radio personalities at that time and people will have trouble identifying with it today because there's so much content available. There's, you know, social media is everywhere and you know everything about every movie and every television show. But back in the 70s and 80s and even into the 90s, it was radio that was the soundtrack that was the soundtrack of people's lives. Right. What you listened to in the car and you had on it at home and you, you know, as you drove across town, it would, uh, as you're going to your work or whatever, you're listening to some great music that you love. And then you hear somebody being funny and giving you a lift and telling you about a great movie that's coming up or a television <laughs> series that's coming on. It was the social media of the time, a real great radio personality was you know kind of johnny carson and informative and uh, a social media center um telling you what's cool and what great shows what movies are coming out and the countdown and they're doing you know giveaways to to movie premieres and it was all very exciting and the guys that were good you know like the guys at k-rock were terrific you know freddie snakeskin love freddie all those guys i used to love jed the fish I, you know, Jed, Jed is terrific. And, you know, and again, I know all these guys and I really like them personally, but I really enjoyed listening to them. And then I would go off and do my American Top 40, which is kind of straight laced and based on the charts and informative with, you know, a few interviews and talking about up from number 17. And uh, it lacked that spontaneity and that charm that live radio had. And guys had to work their way up and figure out. That's, I mean, Jimmy Kimmel came from there. And uh, like guys that have proven themselves to be really fabulous. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel is the, the greatest late night guy now, period. He's clever. He's calm, He's just got a, a unique style all his own. And that's a K-Rock guy. Yeah. And they learned, you know, they, they learned their, their tools of their trade, you know, in the trenches out there showing up every day and, and doing things. That really doesn't exist today because corporations took over radio, took all the competition away. And when you take away competition, people stop trying to get better. Right. And what you have are um, a bunch of uh, companies that are a handful of companies that own all the stations. So they just try to keep it as um, lean as possible, you know, keep the cost of it as low as possible. And, and when things start getting tough, who do they fire? They fire the guys who are the personalities. Yeah, exactly. are the only reason to listen to radio because you can get music every place. You being uh, the radio personality and the style that you did and coming from the era uh, where radio was theater of the mind, like you said, and, and that was the motto of Jim Ladd and many of you in, in rock and roll radio. The disc jockey was very much as important to radio as the music. You were the individuals really that made us want to listen. A lot of times uh, the voice in the box is your friend in your room, your friend at work, your friend in the car. We didn't have cell phones. We were unable to connect with somebody if we were having a bad day or to talk to somebody to get through the traffic or the crap that you were dealing with at the office. And it was you, the radio personality, that gave us the stability, the humor, and pretty much... Uh, the kick in the butt to continue with our day and get us through the day. And and it was always cool when you guys played some kick-ass music. Do you think nowadays that radio does suffer to a magnitude because we have lost that personality, that friend? And, well, no question. And Every, everything is streamlined and, and, you know, somebody picks the music, all the order of the music. Somebody gives you, you know, how much time you can talk and all the things you have to say. Who do you listen to? Yeah. Is there anybody that stands out right now? It, it, it's uh, not many. If there's a handful, there's maybe some in hip hop. There aren't many left. Um, no. Dean are gone. Mark and Brian are gone. Mark uh, and Brian. Yeah, all these guys. Taking you back to the 80s and away from radio a bit, but into music. Were, oh, you, yes. ever, were you ever the party type of guy that, that said, you know, that hit Sunset? 
and hit the whiskey a go go and uh, the rainbow you know. and it, I was over in the corner doing too much of everything. And and I finally had to, uh, you know, stop drugs and alcohol because otherwise I wouldn't be with you today. Because when oh, you're using yes. the convulsions and carry guns because people are trying to kill you, <laughs> oh, not, a good not, a, not a good thing. Not a good thing. Yeah. Who's your favorite band? I can't say that I have a favorite band. Uh, it might be ELO. I, I love mm. Jeff Lynn. I started a project back in the 70s that is going on to this day. And my son grew up with me doing it. And he's more passionate about it than I am. And it's putting a contemporary soundtrack to a silent movie, probably the greatest silent movie ever made. It's two and a half hours long, and it's gone through dozens, if not hundreds, of iterations. Uh, the latest version has 150 ELO songs or pieces of music mm. or sounds that are all woven together to make it sound like the whole thing is being performed live in front of, a stu- in wow. front of an audience. But I mean, it, when it comes to what I can listen to most, it's blues. I don't think anybody has ever been cooler than Muddy Waters or or uh, John Lee Hooker or um, Dr. John. I love Dr. John. Besides, my favorite um, online radio station is Planet Pootwaddle. And mm. I've done a whole bunch of promos for them just and donated to them. It's done by a guy named Michael Sheehy who used to program KNX FM here in LA and did this for his own amusement. And he has the best taste of anybody I've ever met in my life and a collection of tens of thousands of songs. I've never wow. listened to him and not heard something I didn't love that I'd never heard before. And then I've been listening for years. I mean, maybe 10 years. And he has maybe... 10 or 12,000 interstitials done by people like me that just say, Planet Bootwaddle, you know, the magic brownie of the airwaves. Nice. <laughs> and uh, I either listen to that or blues. That's it. Pretty much I don't listen to any, any other radio except Howard Stern, of course. I read somewhere, it's Ancient Wisdom for Modern Times uh, with yes. your own project, Mental Radio. Yeah, Mental Radio, radio is um, at the beginning of the pandemic. In fact, it's one Two years ago, yesterday, that I started it, I saw the lockdown coming and I thought, mm-hmm. I want to create something I can create in my own studio, mostly by myself, that is funny and will maybe give people a lift because everybody was full of dread and gloom. Oh, and yeah. Optimistic without being gooey, you know, mm-hmm. like tonight on a very special blossom, you know, not gooey. <laughs> You know, so no crystals, no beads, no turbans or sitting in lotus, but telepathic jolts from the infinite better. So this this would be made up of stories. And I wanted it to be an experience and an immersion that is unlike anything you hear you ever hear. It's audio theater, but it's audio theater on jet fuel. It goes fast. It it's funny, but it doesn't give you time to laugh. Sometimes even the sounds are funny, but it isn't like corny cartoon sounds and it isn't like 1950s um, radio theater. It's its own world. And it's kind of like the Twilight Zone meets Monty Python. And, and it's fun to listen to. And one guy wrote and said, I like to listen over and over to chapters because there are things I always miss because there's so many. It's so dense with detail. So I started working on it. and. The first thing that happened was a guy that used to work for me, um, it was my director of the Federated Commercials, and he became a world-class music composer. And I called him, I said, Chuck, do you have any, um, his name is Chuck Serino, uh, do you have any music you own the, the rights to, uh, yeah. publishing and copyright, that I could use for this? I'm doing this radio theater, audio theater thing. And he goes, yes, I bet all these movies I was paid to, to do, and they didn't ever come out. I own them all. You can have whatever you want. So wow. now I have cinematic, big 3D music, every kind of sound like Morricone and John Williams. I mean, it's, it's everything. And then people started talking to me about, you know, I do voices, you know, you need some help. I'd like to help you with the writing. And so I've developed this little kind of Mercury Theater, Orson Welles Mercury Theater yeah. group of people so, um, contributing to this free thing I was doing, art for art's sake just to make people laugh and to give people a lift. You know, it started to grow. And now pretty soon I did more and I did more. 
And I was coming up with, um, you know, it's got a whole mythology behind it. It's all based on reality and then fabricated information told with great sincerity and absolute conviction. And I start turning these things out and Craig Ferguson listened and he, and he said, it's Flash Gordon, L. Ron Hubbard, Captain Marvel, Buckaroo Banzai, and everything else. I really, really like it. It's amazing. And they just kept coming. And it's full of like stories with cliffhanger endings and different characters. There's a whole, there's like Brock Stillwell. Brock Stillwell is like a superhero. And so here's the story. In a dark and empty city... A hostile wind snarls as a lone man lumbers down a broken sidewalk. Yellow paper swirls in the wind as he hobbles over jagged shards of concrete and fragments of glass. The bleached bones of a long-dead mouse crunch beneath his frayed flip-flops as Warren Paltry licks chapped lips, looks at his cracked hands, and then sneers at the heavens and walks into a hole. An open manhole cup, and there he was a hundred feet below the street, up to his neck in sewage, and then it just got worse. A torrent of rain and water rushed down the manhole, and all around him were slugs, leeches, and rats on logs. As he grabs for a wall, a tear falls from his eyes and lands on a slug, who flicks it off onto a leech, who twitches, and it lands in the mouth of a rat who licks the tear, bares its teeth, and smiles a satisfied rat smile. And at that moment, a beam of light from a skittish moon struck the sparkle of Warren's tears on the rat's pointed teeth. The light ricocheted back into the sky, burning a symbol on the clouds, a call for help that can only mean one thing. In a secret loft overlooking the city, a square-jawed jackhammer of a man in a plaid shirt sees the signal. Brock Stillwell sees infinity painted on the sky. I pictured, every, I envisioned everything that you uh, <laughs> spoke upon. And then I thought, wow, I really did some ass kicking drugs in the 80s. <laughs> and maybe my Captain Morgan is kicking in. But man, I believe it's your last episode. And it's, Thanks, yeah. it's about, to, you know, there's a beach romance. There's some scenes in there what, that occur that in a bathroom that we won't go in there. Oh, but wow. uh, what strikes me as awesome is that you started it. During lockdown, I was looking at your contributors. I mean, you have a a, a great many people helping you out there and, and being a part of, of your team. And as I was listening to Angst, I noticed, oh my gosh, they're great actors. Uh, one one girl named J.C. Wendell was on Dave's World, the, the sitcom I did for four years. Yes. With Harry Anderson. And she played the kind of ditzy blonde in it. And she's so good. So I'm 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 looking for female actors to to participate in the stuff that I'm writing, and I and I contacted her and I because we've been friends ever since then, and I said, do you do other voices or anything? Because yes, are you kidding? I do everything. I mean, what do you mean? Can you give me a list? She gives me a list that is everything from you know His Girl Friday, 1940s um, uh, women to. Um, Helen Mirren to, uh, I mean, everything. She says, if I can hear an accent, I can do it almost. Nice. Completely. And so she is my go-to, you know, and I've got a few others too, who are really good, but she does everything. We did, a, we did a, uh, one of them has a, um, in one of the, one of the, the features is um, a game show of the future. We travel to the future when everybody's smarter and has it all together. Mm. And and we land in a uh, a TV game show called Time Loop. It's Todd LaFontaine <laughs> and Trudy Delish. Uh, Jeopardy style questions where they where they have to answer in ten seconds while the contestant is spinning in a tilt a whirl, and you get it wrong, <laughs> and you're catapulted into the air, triggering a temporal shift in the universe and threatening all life as we know it. And that's exactly what happens. They try to answer the question, and I'm sorry, Todd. <laughs> And into, <laughs> screaming into the abyss, there goes the West Coast. The sound design on it is hilarious. It's exactly what you've said it is. And it, yes, it's it theater is. of the mind. You're listening and I, I can hear you narrating. And as soon as the little bits, you stop narrating and then here comes the action. Yes. It literally transports me and I can see it in that in that movie studio in my mind. It's like you're watching the movie, but you're not visually watching the movie. There's one, the, the uh, one of my favorite 
they say it's about space. And it goes, you know, it talks about is the space, you know, infinite space is infinite, but is the space between galaxies the same as the space between thoughts? And he goes, and then it goes, maybe the reason in this world we can't get along is because our brains are stuck in a 1940s newspaper bullpen with typewriters clacking and phones ringing and the voices in our head are all talking at the same time. Hank, Trixie, Buck, Chip, Bruise, Butch, Bruiser, Haystack, Tux, Turkle. And they're all talking at the same time. And what they're doing is they're trying to, they're preparing for a showdown Mm -hmm. between a guy and his, and his girlfriend. How much space do you need? Todd. Yeah, back up, back up. Hold yeah, easy, easy. They're all talking at the same time. It's really funny. And then and the way that it works in the if you listen to, with earphones to any of these shows, mm-hmm. sounds come from behind you. They cross over yes. from one side of your head to another. And you've never heard anything like it. There's nobody doing anything like mental radio. 80s fans, if you get a chance, when you listen to these, put your headphones on. Yes. You will thank me for it. Or go to your car. Put the volume up, close the windows, and uh, it's going to take you to to another land. So how can listeners find Mental Radio and listen to all the awesome episodes? They can go directly to mentalradio.net, or you can get the app is the easiest and uh, and quickest. And it has all of this, you know, in each episode, there's a whole thing in it about meditation as well, where where we give you a 90-second introduction to meditation so you can get behind the mind. And there's a whole thing about taking control of the way you look at things. Um, but it's all immersed in, the, in all of this wild humor. But on the app, you can listen to the, the meditation separately if you want to. You can listen to uh, other pieces that never made it into a show that are pretty funny. And any of the shows, all on your phone, in your headphones, or set, you know, on, your, on your computer. Either way, is there, it's real easy to get to or wherever podcasts are heard. It's just mental radio, one, one word. When we come back, there's a lot more with Shadow Stevens. Don't go away. This is Back to the 80s Radio. Hey, some of you remember the 80s vibe, right? Well, it lives loud and proud on Back to the 80s with my pals Toscato and Chang. Welcome, Matey's fans. I have been expecting you. You no longer need to listen to any other podcast. You want the 80s, don't you? The longing for it is swelling in you now. Feel the memories coming to you and listen to back. To the 80s. Give in to nostalgia. With each passing moment, you make yourself more of an 80s fan. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. You don't know the power of Back to the 80s. You, like your childhood, are now mine. <laughs> it's high fly hysteria, video mania, and TV delirium of fantastic... The chairman of the board of Federated would like you to know that Fred Rated is on a trial basis. We frankly question his ability to communicate a clear clicture of what Federated really is, which is namely the best selection of home electronics at the lowest possible prices anywhere. Prices are crazy! Insane prices on a remote control Sanyo VHS VCR, only two ninety nine. dollars Now please do not try this at home. And by the way, we at Federated feel that smashing perfectly good merchandise is shameful and overly destructive. So enjoy it while you can, Fred. Your days may be numbered. Better it smashes prices. <laughs> Get it? Back, back to the 80s. Let me explain something to you. I am a vintage, mass-marketed children's toy from the 80s. Back to the 80s radio. Joining us today is radio host, voiceover actor, television personality, Shadow Stevens. Now, many of us will remember him from back in the 80s from the Federated commercials as Fred Rated. And some may remember him from Dave's World on CBS. He's also been the host of American Top 40 
and a plethora. Jefe, what is a plethora? Yes, a plethora of other work. Today, he joins us to talk a little bit of some of the cool things he took part in, particularly back in the 80s. I started wondering if your mental radio shows would help some people with either ADD or or people who have a hard time focusing, for example, like me. Beneath all of the the, the humor and the storytelling is a, a dedication to subversive optimism. And and part of the pitch is that that the whole thing, um, the mythology behind it is that Nikola Tesla in 1892 discovered wireless energy transfer, which you know is, is true. What most people don't realize is that he also realized that besides being a, a uh, in the physical universe, that it transcended that. And that got into telepathy and it, and he knew that was too far out at the time. So he, he, he started a secret underground worldwide organization dedicated to uplifting mankind called Optimisticals. And the yes. Optimisticals, which is M-Y-S-T-I-C-A-L-S, is dedicated to quietly making change. So like when um, in world, before World War II, when um, Roosevelt came up with, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, oh. itself, he didn't really write that. That was one of the optimisticals. This, like one of those people behind the scenes that are making changes that empower people. And so with all of that in mind, the whole, the whole show is being broadcast from a former Masonic temple somewhere in Hollywood at a secret location. Mm. And in it are theaters and labs and laboratories. And the outlook chamber is at the top up by the penthouse with a dome ceiling. And we go there to talk about, here's what we're really talking about. And we're talking about angst. Angst is a different kind of fear. It's a manifestation of fear. And what we need to do is we either have to get ahead of the mind with actions or behind the mind with meditation. If you're at the mercy of the mind, it can spin out of control sure. and take you down into a spiral of desperation and weakness and, and, and depression and depression. And there is no upside. One of the things that happened as I was developing this is I was reading Viktor Frankl. And, and Viktor Frankl is this uh, psychologist, philosopher, Holocaust survivor. And he survived four, uh, four different places. And, and in it, I don't want to go into the whole story, but basically what he, he concluded was that when you, when you ridicule fears and phobias, you can rise above them and get distance from them through the use of humor and irony. And if I make fun of being afraid, then maybe being afraid isn't going to have that power over me. So one of the exactly. first things I wrote was a, a snappy little jingle called, don't forget the world is ending. Don't forget to be afraid. Don't forget to keep pretending you've got it made. Your nice. best fears are behind you. So sit alone in your room. Watch a little TV and wait for impending doom. Watch a little TV. And it's like, <laughs> it's so happy. Fear is like dumb. There's a movie recently about basically the end of the world. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, you know, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it. But for <laughs> that scene at the end, they're waiting for the end of the world. And they decide, you know what? We're just going to talk as it is a normal day. We're going to have dinner. Yeah. And we're just going to wait for the yeah. end that way. Yes. Now, quick to dismiss and make fun of and and uh, being glib and, uh, you know, and not take things serious. It's like, whoa. but I, I love that. It's my favorite movie of the year, I think. I live and die by this belief that comedy and music are the only two entities that will bring unity between every race, religion, sexual preference. And I believe those are the only two entities that can make man and woman stop in their tracks, observe, and lose themselves to where all negativity is gone away for whether it be four to five minutes of a song or two to three minutes of a set of somebody saying something funny. Um, it's tricky because people are so locked into their particular perspective or otherwise logic and humor would be able to change people who are deeply committed to um, insane things, conspiracy theories and other things. And, and you would think that you would be able to uh, talk sense to them and say, 
here's fact. Well, those are not the facts. And these are alternate facts. And whose facts do you believe? And what are those facts based on? But it's all based on these piecemeal information. And, and I do think that a lot of times um, weed use can contribute to your being susceptible. Otherwise, you know, we, we'd be able to tell them a joke and get them to laugh at it and they can't laugh at themselves. So it's maybe not as simple as that, although I think it's worth trying. And mm-hmm. I think that, that, you know, people that can write music that moves people and communicates um, big ideas, yay. I mean, that, that's a better shot. And every once in a while you make a breakthrough or you'll touch somebody. And with humor the same way, you know, that some humor is just cynical and some humor is and sassy and some humor is uh deeply profound and and cuts through and that's what we hope to try to do shadow stevens i can't thank you enough for oh, taking the time totally to, enjoyed to share with us because it's a breath of fresh air to hear somebody in all sincerity talk about their experiences that go way back to a time where another generation that's living now, that's younger now, will never be able to identify. And exactly. we're able to bring great people such as yourself and your experiences. And as the motto of Back to the 80s Radio is to introduce the 80s to a whole new generation. That's great. And we, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a great era. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and my black soul for coming on to our program. Uh, I would love to have you any given day, night. You can come back and bless us with your presence and we can talk more about radio and just maybe just shoot the crap and give the listeners something to sit back and say, hey, you know what, honey? So what if the kids aren't in bed at nine? You know what? So what if my boss is a douchebag? So what if money's a little tight? So what if we're out of vodka? So what if you can't cook? So what if the neighbors are making love too loud for us? Let's sit down and listen to Shadow Stevens with these two jerks that I give constantly thumbs down (laughs) on their Facebook pages. Shadow, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. It's a a genius wrapped in an idiot driving a stolen sleigh full of Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) You've been listening to Shadow Stevens. Back to the 80s. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. And let me point to the president. The macho man Randy Savage is not happy with your decision. Yeah. I am the cream in the World Wrestling Federation. And there is no doubt about it. Yeah, you mean Gene Oakland. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. This is Back to the 80s Radio, and now this is the time that many of you have been waiting for, because it's the time where we talk about what made us angry back in the 1980s. But in honor of the most wondrous Chang, we've now dubbed them Changries. So Chang, what makes you Changry today compared to the 80s? You know what gets me Changry about radio nowadays in comparison to back in the 80s? There is no radio jock. You know what gets me changry nowadays about radio? The monopoly that mother and father radio stations are gone because of huge radio corporations eating them up. You know what gets me changry? The CEOs don't give a damn about we, the listeners. All they care about is the money. You know what gets me changry about terrestrial radio nowadays? Some yuppie, fancy pants suit wearing, Maserati driving, two marriage divorce kind of individual with a girlfriend half of his daughter's age is calling the shots and making sexy people more money than a musical talent would and paying a jock to entertain and take people out of the crap that we're going through today. You know what else gets me changry about radio today as opposed to the 1980s? The radio stations do not allow a friendship with the radio jock as they used to be. You cannot turn on the radio station and listen to somebody as your friend in the next room to make your day go a little bit brighter. No. I listen to a pre-recorded jackass telling me the same thing every 45 minutes 
and I listened to the same music set that I heard two hours before. Yes, that's what gets me changry about radio today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been this week's Changries. If you have something that made you angry back in the 80s and you'd like us to mention them here on Back to the 80s Radio, go ahead and send us a note by way of Facebook Messenger and we will go ahead and do our best to talk about it on the following show. So on behalf of myself, Toscano, I just want to thank you for joining us this week. We will see you next week with a great show, with a great guest, and with more 80s talk. Be safe, take care, and we will see you next Friday. Ah, before I release you to another Changtastic weekend, this is Mr. Chang. I'm going to do my thing over the weekend. You do your thing. And remember, please don't go out and drink and drive. We need all your souls because they're beautiful to keep it going. And don't let what's going on submerge you in in so much depression and, and your outlook become negative because you know what there is a plan with a great spirit all you've got to do is understand what's going on keep that smile up there and everybody out there stay lifted and gifted and until next friday i bid you all an adios arrivederci hasta mañana hasta la vista hasta luego sayonara to all my valley cats see you bros see you sisters and to all my homies in the barrio that i forgot oh 